While swiping through social media and watching YouTube videos, you tend to get the idea that every photographer is just constantly on this great adventure shooting brilliant pictures. And yes, oftentimes this is indeed the case. However, what you don't always see is when things go wrong. On this astrophotography road trip to the Harz region in Germany, a lot went wrong. I almost decided not to share this adventure at all. But then I thought, let's keep it real on the channel. Maybe people will learn something from my mistakes. So here it is, the seven most frustrating challenges in astrophotography. Good evening, welcome back to the channel. After about five and a half hours drive just after work, Kuhn and myself have arrived at the Harz region in Germany. We have uh, just climbed the mountain and uh, yeah, we have kind of 360 views around. We're in the Bortel 3 region. There are some clouds now, but they are forecasted to go away later. And we're hoping, hoping to catch the core, the Milky Way core rising for the first time this year. So let's uh, scout out this area. So there is challenge number one, going to location unprepared. In this case, we didn't know the area at all and had no time for some daylight scouting. It turned out that the area we could work with was much too small for two photographers at once. More on that later. Another example of being unprepared happened about one and a half years ago. I had a plan to shoot some moonscapes together with my buddy Frank Verberg. It was a beautiful clear moonlit night and the purple header was in full bloom. Although we certainly enjoyed our time, we ended the shoot without any serious picture. Why? We had not scouted the area beforehand and couldn't find any great ones. Some people thrive in these situations, but myself I find it very hard to find a good comp on the spot in the dark. Now back to Germany where we are about to experience our second challenge of the night. Okay, so uh, we have now been here uh, on this uh, hill for I think about 20 minutes. I uh, have just been uh, acclim acclimatizing, is that a word? I don't know, just a bit, getting a feel of the area. And it feels cold. <laughs> uh, Kuhn has just uh, shot a uh, short uh, winter panorama. He is uh, now putting on an uh, extra layer of clothing there. And um, yeah, we are, uh, it's so cold, we are even considering uh, to come down again to the car because uh, the Milky Way core uh, will start rising, I think in about yeah, four hours or so. And it's a bit cold to uh, remain here uh, for hours maybe. But yeah, we'll see. Maybe if we come down a bit, uh, we get out of the wind. But uh, yeah, still it's uh, yeah, it's pretty dark. You can see it's really dark. There's a lot of haze in the sky. It is relatively low, uh, yeah, sort of fog. So maybe that will add something to uh, our shots. Or um, yeah, maybe it will just be too hazy so we won't get any detail, but we will see. Let's uh, first... Uh, Walk around here a bit, get a bit warm, scout for some compositions and uh, yeah, see what we do the rest of the night. <laughs> So there it is, frustration number two, the weather conditions or underestimating them. In this case it was much colder and much more windy than we expected. The humidity in the air also made it feel a lot colder than it actually was. Uh, both of these can of course be worked with if you are properly prepared by wearing the correct clothing or have a plan how to battle it. For example in this storm challenge I did a while ago with Cornet. But sometimes you just underestimate them. For example on this mountain for sure uh, and also my first time going to Norway. And last but not least, there's always our trusty old fluffy friends. We can do a little bit of astro bingo here because you can also see that the clouds have come rolling in. If you see the clouds behind me, there's not a gap uh, in the clouds. Uh, he also brought with him the clouds. <laughs> the clouds come rolling in, 100% overcast. Yes, you get the idea. Back on the mountain in Germany, it was so cold and uncomfortable, Kuhn decided to hike back to the car. Although that plan actually didn't sound too bad by now, I tried to at least first finish some test foregrounds for a planned panorama. This is where I was facing the third challenge, technical issues. A while ago I've had my shutter release fail on me in a Bortle 3 sky in France. This meant I had to manually push the button for every single exposure with a maximum of 30 seconds the entire night. Later that night Martijn's shutter release also broke down because his camera fell to the ground. Back on my current trip with Kuhn on the mountain, I couldn't figure out a weird purple glow in my test exposures. It could have been M glow or maybe an infrared leakage, I don't know. But back home I found out it could be fixed when I shot off my live view. But I didn't figure that out on location. So cold, tired and to be honest also a bit miserable, I also started my hike back to the car. 
this is where I found Kuhn in kind of the same state as myself, which is also challenge number four, having the wrong mindset. We were so disappointed by now, we even considered just going back to the hotel and get a good night's sleep. One thing we knew for sure, we didn't feel like hiking back up that mountain again tonight. Eventually, we pulled ourselves together just enough to kick ourselves in the butts, scout for a plan B and just try to save the night. Although it wasn't what we drove five and a half hours for, it was definitely better than missing out on a clear night entirely. Hello there again. So obviously we are at a total different location. Um, it's been yeah a few hours later, we are a few hours later now, let me tell you what happened. Um, on Google Maps and when we came there the spot looked fantastic, but um, to be honest it's a really small area to work with. So uh, when the other guy, uh, Kuhn, was looking for compositions, I was constantly walking in his way through his shots with my headlights and uh, the same happened when I uh, was looking for compositions. Um, well, we could have worked around that with a bit of planning, but to be totally honest, it was also so windy and extremely cold there that uh, yeah, we said we are not and enjoying this anymore at the moment. It was freezing, minus five degrees or so, wind, uh, very uncomfortable. Then my camera got some internal reflections which ruined my foreground shots and uh, Kuhn decided to just go down to the car and about 15 minutes later I thought, yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. So in the car we uh, have spent uh, about, uh, yeah, I think in half an hour uh, to looking uh, looking for other compositions in the area, which is pretty difficult. Um, anyway, we have come now to a dam and a lake and what the beautiful thing is now is it is there's almost no wind, so I'm hoping to shoot reflections. Um, yeah, there is a mountain uh, where the Milky Way will rise in about an hour, so I won't get uh, the whole core, but I think I'll get some great rift action. And um, yeah, my tracker is set up now. Uh, I'll have to wait for another uh, 45 minutes or so before I start tracking. Then I walk a few steps to the water, I think, and shoot my reflection shot, which I could not track, of course, because otherwise... Um, how does it work? <laughs> Can you track reflected stars? Hmm, I'm not sure, but I think I'll fix that with some single shots and do some stacking later. So, um, yeah, Kuhn is set up above the dam there. He has another composition in mind. So, uh, yeah, let's just try to enjoy the rest of our night. Because to be honest, we were at the point of just giving up going to the hotel, but uh, we're pushing through, we're pushing through. This night, Kuhn made a mistake setting up his tracker and forgot to check his test exposures. The result was that his tracked shots, well, were not tracked. Myself, I tend to fall into the trap of making test exposures at a very high ISO and starting a sequence without resetting my ISO to normal levels. Also, the longtime viewers might remember this one, where I accidentally shot a star trail sequence with one hour exposure time instead of multiple short ones. Now onto number 6, the stars not aligning. I have been out so many times hoping to catch the aurora, noctilucent clouds or meteors and came back with zero to none. It is just part of the hobby that sometimes an astronomical show, if you will, just won't happen. And that's okay, because at least you tried. This brings me to the next and final number on the list, which is not trying at all. There is a thing that landscape photographer and YouTuber Thomas Heaton once said, which still resonates with me. You've got to be in it to win it. If you stay inside, you know for sure that you won't get a photo. And trust me, I've been in this situation way too many times, ending up shooting a great Aurora show from my window and phone. Fortunately in Germany, we decided to stay out there and keep trying, despite the setbacks we experienced. Would we do things differently next time? Yeah, I think so. But at least we learned something and I hope you too, by watching this video, Video. What was your most frustrating challenge in astrophotography? Please let me know in the comments, I am super curious. And what about the results? Well, they were not exactly what we came for, but we surely didn't come back empty-handed. Thank you guys for watching again and I'll see you on the next one.